kick off with self concept give us a flavor of self concept Rory. well uh, self concept has been discussed on many by many psychologists and sociologists and we're going to put our attention today to i think carl rogers notion of the self concept and if you if you want to kind of do some really good reading around that he outlines that in his in his book called on becoming a person i think it was published in 1961 if my memory serves me um but what he did was he he borrowed one of the people who influenced rogers a lot was son kierkegaard who was a danish philosopher and kierkegaard's uh, quote of to be true that self which one truly is to be that self which one truly is self-concept how we see ourselves and, and more to the point how we value ourselves valuing and our self-concept are really linked together like i don't know fish and chips if you like the UK. yeah <laughs> yeah a cultural <laughs> reference okay. coming from your self-concept rory and that's the thing you know so I've, I've got a bit of a definition here self-concept is how we view ourselves which is exactly as you said as you've said rory it's a picture that we create from our own subjective reality and it's made up of made up of the certain conditions that we hold as our own truths and that's going to be linked to who we are where we live what family we were born into uh, what our belief structure is all of that is going to form your self-concept and the way that you look at the world it's almost a lens that we have that every single person has and we see our truths through our self-concept measured against our experiences that that we've been taught our self-truths yes and you know rogers rogers was um, immersed in the philosophy of phenomenology the, the, the philosophy of perception and self-concept is all about, all about our perception. And he, interestingly, he talked, he talked about the real self and the ideal self. So the organismic self, a word actually not coined by Rogers, I discovered this morning, it was co coined by someone called Seaman in 1983, um, but I digress. Um, but yes, the, the organismic self is that who we are. And the real self is that of which we want to become. And it really does link into Roger's idea of this is a motivational growth model. A lot of people forget that the, the person-centered therapy is a motivational meta model. In other words, it's about helping clients pursue who they want to become. I like that. And I, we're called upon as counselors, as psychotherapists, and we're called upon this in our training to really examine ourselves. That's why we have the personal development groups. That's why we do the exercises such as Jahari's window. That's why we have feedback from others for, for areas that are maybe unseen to ourselves. But it's interesting if you ask a regular person, I don't know what a regular person is, Rory, but I'm, I'm using the term. <laughs> if you say, who are you? Tell me about you as yourself. So often we're, we're likely to define ourselves by what we do. Oh, oh I'm a plumber mm. and I live in such such a place and I'm married and I have so many children and we define ourselves by what we do and that that is around us. But there's so much more to us. And as a counselor, we need to d dive under the uh, I'm a plumber and start looking at what is going on inside us. That's why journaling is just so helpful in us seeing our own self-concept. The, the, the interesting thing about self-concept is it, it is often invisible to self because it is a lens that we look through and that lens can sometimes be um, warped and, and change the perspective of what we're looking at based on the values that we hold as truths. And these Rogers refer to as introjected values or conditions of worth. And when we look through that lens of introjected values, conditions of worth, we see things not as they are, but as we are. And there's a, there's a great saying that we see the world not as it is, but as we are. Um, it was written, it's Stephen R. Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, a great book. And he coined that phrase. We see the world not as it is, but as we are through our self-concept, through that lens that we perceive. Yeah. And also, you know, you were right in, in, your, in your introduction, Ken. You know, when we, when we think about who we are, we're influenced by our, you know, our society. In, in the UK, there's still the discussion of class. We can be influenced by our gender. If we're, you know, if we're male or female or gender fluid, we can be influenced by our 
uh, politics, by our parents. There are so many things that influence our view of the world, some of them that are really positive, and some of them are, which, which are not so. And of course, Rogers talks about, talks about those as uh, conditions of worth and interjected values. In other words, only being worthy, only being loved if you're working to someone else's agenda, or as Rogers talks about, external locus of evaluation. And how often do we see clients who come to our practice, Ken, who are working to other people's views, pleasing others and giving away themselves? And it's only at the point where people say, well, you know, maybe I have to put other people first from time to time, but actually my needs need to be met. I need to be heard and accounted for in the world. That is where people move from the organism itself to the ideal self, that journey of, of um, taking care of themselves and accounting mm. for themselves. Oh, very much so, Rory. I beautifully put there. And, and you're speaking there about where we will see the self-concept of, of, of our client. Because we, yes, we need to understand our self-concept. And hopefully through examining our self-concept, we can be more accepting. And this is where it kind of links into unconditional positive regard that we're closing today's episode with. In that we can regard the person who is in front of us just as the person they are from the road that they have traveled, no matter what it is that they're bringing if we can put aside our lens, our self-concept, and just see them for the human, fellow human being that they are, rather than through the lens that often judges. So that's what we need to look at as counsellors. But the client is bringing their self-concept, their way of seeing the world. You mentioned there that those conditions of worth, I am only worthy when, and then insert condition of worth here. And the world is set up into, in such a way that it, they're almost encouraged uh, conditions of worth. You're told that if you drive a certain car, that you are more worthy. If you have a certain job, you are more worthy. And even from, from schooling, if you get certain grades or marks, you are praised and told how worthy you are. You may get that from your teacher. You may get prizes at certain events and evenings where other children who did not meet that do not get those. And it's so simple and so easy to fall into buying into, I am worthy when I'm achieving in a certain way. And external people are telling me that that is uh, uh, favorable to them. And of course, that runs out because it's not the organismic self as, as uh, Rogers says that, that that inner self we're acting to that external locus of valuation dancing to somebody else's tune and that's an incongruence because that that is true and that that you you're trying to meet these conditions that are not really meetable in all circumstances and values themselves accordingly and our job as counselors is to be there hear that reflect it back to them so that they hear it from an external uh, source and be with them, I guess. Yeah, and, and I think to do that, as you, as you rightly said, Ken, you need to understand who you are. You know, you, you cannot sit in front of a client without having a good understanding of your own motivations and what makes you tick, which is why um, on psychotherapy courses and counselling courses, students are asked to attend their own therapy and to take their own personal development very very seriously because if we're not careful our kind of lens of the world and our view of the world can collide very quickly with the clients you know and if you're listening out there do this do this little experiment next time next time you're in class just get a partner wander over to the window as long as you've got a view write two things down you can see out of the window each of you don't tell each other what you're writing down sit down and just say what did you see and i'm going to bet that unless there's, there's something that's just so unmissable out of the window, you will see two very different things. When I used to do that, people used to see um, a car in the trees or they might see buildings. And I say, it's interesting, isn't it? One window, two very distinct views out of it. And that is exactly, that's exactly what self-concept is, our perceptual view out of the window of our existence. I love it. What a great debate. What a great topic. And our topics come from you. Uh, our listening audience, um, and you suggest them on our Facebook page. And if you want to join in the conversation on our Facebook page, go to Facebook and put in Counseling Tutor, and there we are. We've got two pages. One is kind of our normal page where you'll get updates uh, when we post out, and that will come through to your timeline. The other one is a group. It's a closed group for counselors and psychotherapists who are on a journey of study. And we've got many qualified practitioners in there as well. Why? Because they are still learning. 
they're still open to learning and growing and developing. And we have some tutors in there, which uh, we value greatly. So thank you to all that are members of that group. And if you haven't joined it yet, just go to Facebook, Counseling Tutor, come and knock on the door. We will let you in. We will welcome you warmly. Thank you.